The purpose of this training is to demonstrate how to use your LabCorp interface, ordering lab tests, and printing requisitions. The first thing we'll look at is the different encounter styles and where to access your LabCorp orders from within an encounter. To do that, we'll go ahead and open a test patient and we'll create a new encounter. The first style encounter we'll demonstrate is going to be a text encounter. When in a text encounter, you would have to access the plan tab or the P on the bottom left hand corner of the screen and you'll need to be in the category of labs. Now, if you have LabCorp tests built into your common list, they would display here. Otherwise, you'll click all and you'll see the LabCorp tests indicated by the CPT code along with LabCorp. If you notice to the right, you'll see these blue identifying numbers and those are the lab core test numbers. So if you're used to using those, you can key those in as well to search for the different lab core tests. As you scroll down, you'll pass you through your lab core and then you start to get into other and in-house labs if you have any of those set. So they're categorized based on the lab they're produced for. Obviously, being a LabCorp training, we're going to go ahead and choose a LabCorp test. When I enter into the procedure code, I can generate it to create the order and you can say yes or no, whatever is appropriate for billing purposes. It's performed outside the clinic, so you can leave it there. Obviously, you still want an order generated so that the lab specimen is drawn. Once I click OK, that creates the order for that lab. Now, this would be under the section in your text template that was for orders or wherever you want it to be titled. I'm just showing you how to add a lab test. When I click OK and go into the next screen, I'll be able to see under the order section that that order was generated. and. When I open the patient's chart under medical information and orders, I should see that test as well here. So when I double click on the order, it brings open the lab order screen. I can see the patient's information. I can see the lab being order. I could click on this little icon and see the encounter assessments or ask the system for justifying diagnosis to accommodate that order. For the purpose of training, I'm just going to choose a justifying diagnosis. Now, notice when I'm selected on LabCorp, over here under additional clinical information, there's a red label that says panel specific data required. Whenever you see that, you must click on this little icon and choose the panel specific data. It's asking for information that needs to be populated in order to process the lab, and in this case, it's basically just giving you a special instruction here at the bottom. So you can indicate on here whatever is appropriate. Maybe if it's an adult dose, you could do the 75G to indicate what the patient's taking. So it looks like they're wanting to know the dosing of medicine on this glucose tolerance. Specimen source, as you choose them from here, so let's just say venous blood, and use either one, it doesn't matter. It'll build your common list from there, or you can build it yourself by selecting the different ones that you would utilize quite a bit and add to your common list so that you're building that common list. With the lab order set, the panel specific data set, the type of specimen collection and the quantity, whether it's you know, 250 milliliters or however you measure out how much your specimen amount is. Any comments you want to add to the order. Any potentially dangerous specimens, you can mark this. Patient fasting, you can check that. It does send, however, some lab tests will still have panel-specific data that require you to say yes, no on whether the patient is fasting. So even though I've checked this, if I go in panel-specific data and ask about fasting, I want to type the word yes or no. And I should point out, going back into that panel-specific data, as you click on the item here, there could be four or five different things that they're asking for on the lab, but as you click on it, it'll tell you down in the yellow area 
what they're looking for, a yes, no, or what if it's a question, if you're they're looking for medication, etc. What actually sends this order over to the lab is two is a two-step process. You have to first set the specimen collection to uh, specimen collected. That means you've drawn the lab and prepared it. And the order status has to be at requested. With those two things, as soon as I click OK, this order will generate out to LabCorp. Additionally, printing your requisition depends on how LabCorp has you set up, and this will be an answer that LabCorp will need to give you whether they're printing onto certain paper, etc. I'll generate the email out to them and you should be notified by them how to handle this portion. So it's going to generate the lab order somewhat like this. I think LabCorp has their own compendium built in and format for these requisitions. So it is going to be slightly different. So once we say OK, that would complete it. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and set it at a cancel. Now, if you have an order that's pending and you want to cancel it, as soon as you set it to specimen collected and canceled, that will generate that canceled message out to LabCorp as well. You have several different statuses depending on you know whether or not results are partially received or results are received in their entirety, whether a request is rejected, and that might happen because your panel specific data was not entered. Not all categories will work with LabCorp, but the majority of these will. But if you ever want to come in and cancel an order that you previously sent, you would simply come in and put canceled and you could send a comment like, you know, maybe you set the order up and sent it and then the patient, you needed a urine sample or a blood sample for that matter and you were unable to obtain it. So you could go in and cancel it and just say unable to obtain specimen. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and cancel out without saving. So what would happen is under lab orders, you're going to see those things that were ordered. And then as those are resulted on the desktop of whoever, let me go back into an order real quick. Um, let's go into one of these other tests from our testing. So whoever I tell it to send the results to is who's going to get those actual lab results. And so when you come to your desktop, if you were the one that was to get those test results, you'll see those test results come in. As I'm selected on it, I can see a quick view here at the bottom. You do have a scroll section. However, drilling into it is going to allow me to see the entire result on screen. You can forward the results, so it could be forwarded to the provider if you have a medical assistant receiving all the lab results and just forwarding on certain ones. Mark as viewed, etc. One thing to note is down in the bottom right hand corner you have a couple of different options. So obviously you can open the result, you can mark it as viewed, you can open the chart, and you can forward the result. You can generate a mail message based on this, you can create a reminder for the account or you can view the order and then the last one that's a newer one is going to be view grouped for example if I have this patient and they have three separate lab orders that were processed I can click on the view grouped and it's going to open all lab results for the for that one patient so you don't have to open all three individually and sign off it'll allow you to open and view all three in a comprehensive report and then sign off on all three at the same time. So that view grouped is going to be really important as you're generating multiple tests out for patients. So let's take a look from the chart on creating an order when you're not using a text-based encounter. If you're using a regular encounter where you have the plan tab as a discrete data tab, you'll still access labs. Again, same thing if under common list you don't have lab core tests, you'll have to click all to see your lab core values. And then you'll have to select your tests and bring them over. Setting your performance status the first time, especially if you want it to generate the order, which is likely if a specimen has to be drawn. So just remembering to do those things the first time. And as long as you have your performance status settings to be memorized by the system, then the next time you go to order this same exact test, it should remember your settings. So in this case, I'll go ahead and just say OK and click OK there. And let me just point out under Tools, User Preferences, on the General tab, as soon as you go in, the very first screen, 
under expert settings, if you have that checked, remember choices made in the performance status, the next time you order that lab, it's going to remember how that was ordered. So just remember that it doesn't matter whether you're using a text encounter, a discrete data encounter. It's always going to happen under the plan tab and then under the lab tab. So under plan and then lab. An alternate way to create an order is from your desktop or from the patient chart and orders you can generate a new order. You do have to tell it what type in this case being lab court would be a lab core order and you would just select the patient name. So I'll go ahead and just hit F12 to pull my last patient. You're going to say who's ordering it, who should get the results on their desk, and who's assigned to process that lab. What user in the practice is going to draw the specimen or needs to be aware of this lab order. From here, again, you would choose your lab test. Remember, I didn't have anything in my common list, so nothing's there, but if I click on all, I'll see all of my lab core tests. And I would simply select the desired test. And as soon as I select it and I see that pop-up of red data, I want to make sure to take care of that. I can also come in and select the secondary test. Again, if I select on it and that red label stays there, that just means that there's information and it will combine it. I open it one time, it'll allow me to populate the information for both tests at the same time. And as I select on the one, it's going to ask for the volume. So I'll just put 400 uh, ml. And here it's saying under special instruction, it's just reminding me that I need to Please refer to the endocrine appendix of LabCorp directory of services for instructions on multiple specimen testing. And so I'm just going to put OK in there indicating that I read the message. You're basically going to just think of if it's a yes, no question, you want to answer yes, no. Or if you read that index and there was specific information that you should populate here, a comment, then go ahead and populate that comment. So as I do that, again, I would have to say, now see how it has a list on my drop down because last time I chose that one, but maybe this one is different because it's urine. And so I want to say urine. Put the amount. Any comments you want, remember to be drawn in house. Once you've collected it, you say specimen collected and requested those two fields. Now, it will require that these fields above be filled out, but these two fields are what send the request over to LabCorp. It sends all the demographic and all the lab order details over to LabCorp electronically. So they're waiting on the specimen at that point. And then, of course, your printing, that is going to allow you to go ahead and print off your requisition, which likely will be using requisition forms supplied to you by LabCorp. The specifics of those we'll need to know so that we can make sure that it's configured in the background to print, say, the specimen labels at the bottom, etc. I'm going to go ahead and just cancel out of this without saving. But that would generate an order and then again the test results, no change to that. Test results would be the same. When a patient has a lab order and they have specimen results, those will store under the medical information tab under the lab orders. Now, I have that in my common list, but you would find orders and under your order section is where you're going to see the actual orders. And then I believe under the medical is where, yes, under medical, you would see the lab results. And so you'll see the different test date and the results. So in here, of course, this was during our testing. We had an error, and then once we resolved the error, we had the complete lab. If I wanted to see this in a printed report format from LabCorp, all I have to do is hit the View button, and I can see that lab. Or I can hit the View Group, and it's going to show me both of those together. So see how it's showing me not only this one, but it's showing me the one that had the issue as well grouped into this on the bottom. I would be able to mark all as viewed by simply clicking on that. Your out of range results or things that are considered out of range would be printed in red on this screen. And over time, if you keep performing the same test, it just builds basically a graph of those results for you. And you have some graphing capabilities here depending on the type of test you're doing.
that's really all there is to ordering LabCorp tests through your EMR and receiving the results through your EMR. The final component that you'll need to assure that your LabCorp orders are actually processing or sending out, I'm going to go ahead and filter back for the past month so that I can see mine. So you can see the statuses. The status of requested are those orders that have been created but have not yet been sent out to wherever they should go. So in this case, these types of orders really don't go anywhere. They're internal. But if I were to include those that were sent, and let me go ahead and change to request sent, you can see that this order is indicating that it's LabCorp. So this is one of my tests when bringing this system lot. And so request sent indicates that an actual file was sent out to LabCorp, and they should have the electronic copy of this test. If for some reason it needed to be resent, you would only need to click this set status either through the icon buttons in the bottom right or by clicking on the row and then right clicking and choosing set status. You want to set it to requested. What would happen is that order would then be set back to a requested status and every approximately 300 seconds our interface would be looking to see if there are any new orders and eventually it should drop back to this request sent status. If for some reason your orders are staying in the requested status, the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go into edit and make certain that specimen collected is set and that the status is set to request, not request sent. Request sent means it's already gone. Requested. If as long as the order looks like this, but your status is not updating from request sent, it's just staying at requested, that would be a time to call for support. If you came in and saw that the specimen collected had not been set, that would be the reason. Remember, it requires specimen collection be set to specimen collected along with order status being to requested. If I wanted to cancel this order, I could do that by clicking on canceled and saying OK. I could print if I wanted to, and that would process or update that order. So when I come into my canceled orders, I would be able to see that. So remember that when you want to track an order that's been sent out to LabCorp, the first thing you're going to want to do is go to orders. The next thing you could do is you can choose the type as lab orders. Next, you could filter on the type if you have some in-house labs and you want to distinguish between LabCorp, then you'll want to use description. Sometimes sorting on name. So any of these fields will allow you to click and sort. You can also set your filter. If you know it was sent yesterday, choose yesterday and then choose your status as either canceled or you can choose all in your status so that all orders come up because you know it's in there from yesterday. Just remember to use your filters and to use your ordering of columns to help you find prior orders. You can then right click for your options on that order or use the buttons in the bottom right hand corner. This completes our training for the LabCorp lab interface with the MicroMD EMR. If you have further questions, please contact support and we will be glad to assist you. Thank you.